Alright, good people. I know my voice sounds very different, but I just kind of saw his big brother just pass away very brutally. Man, that was... Yeah, that, that was... That was incredibly sad. And no one could tell me that wasn't sad. You... You... You have to be a tough person if you... Even if you didn't cry on that, you have to be a tough person if you just didn't get immediately sad from that, or just thought about your sibling. And that's kind of like, gosh, this this one hit hard. By the way, this is part six. This is not a walkthrough. I just wanted to go ahead and show you the art gallery and behind the scenes, and I definitely wanted to see the director commentary video because I want to see what's their inspiration to make this fantastic game. I, I, I kind of want to do it. So let's go through the art gallery real quick. Yeah, yeah, that's the cult level. Uh, I think that's also supposed to be the cult level too. That one was the most interesting, and the way that we, you, you, I found that interesting that you had to use the blood and actually kind of act like one of their idols, and that one was creative. Yeah, the co-op, well, there's no co-op, but the way that they did that bit with the kind of like the left and right analytic, because we don't have co-op yet, and I find that very fascinating by the time we do the remake, but still. But, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, the dream sequence with the mom, that was pretty well done. Every sequence was well done. I had no complaints except for one, and uh, you'll find out in my verdict video. The Valley of the Giants was uh, as disturbing and as kind of like made you feel really, really. It, it went dark territory by the time we got to that. I remember the first time we played that. That's dark. Yeah, I'm gonna just gonna. Oh, yeah, I remember the sequence too. That one was brutal. That's amazing of the concept art of how they got this. There's the dad, of course. And uh, okay, that must have been. I'm thinking that is the like the updated art of how they look. The troll wife and the troll. Ah, that lady. Watch her. The mom. I don't know who that one is. It's been a while. We never saw the invisible enemy, or we don't know what they look like. But anyway, that was the art gallery, I just kind of wanted to speed through it. The sound gallery, I don't think that's worth acknowledging because the music is already played through all the videos. So let's watch the director commentary video in here, and guys, the verdict video will be out pretty shortly. Hello everybody, my name is Joseph Fares, and I'm the writer-director of Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. I'm gonna give you a cool walkthrough of the game and give you some insights and fun facts throughout the development of the game. Excuse my English, I'm uh, originated from Lebanon so that's why I have kind of Arabic English style. But you will hear, actually talking about Arabic English and Arabic language, the language for brothers is actually inspired by my own language. In our, and you will actually, people who listen to this and uh, understand Arabic will understand some words. So this will be quite a long time actually I prayed brothers because this is almost a year after we finished the game but uh, let's see what happens it's gonna be fun and I'm gonna try to tell you as much stories as much fun as I can so just a little bit about myself and my background uh, I am uh, normally a, a filmmaker so this is actually my first game and took a lot of time to make it happen and it was a absolutely amazing experience to make a video game but so hard I mean, I've done five features, but that's a walk in the park compared to this. Again, in Brothers, uh, we didn't want to have a actually spoken language. And the reason of that is that I really like the interactivity of gaming. That's what keeps me going. So the idea was to actually keep everything like a made up language to make the player, you know, guess and almost in a way more interactive because trying to figure out what they're saying, reading their language. So that's part of the reasons. Also, another reason is because we didn't have so much money. So we couldn't actually hire any actors. I find that... That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Nayi! Nayi. Ta. Ta. In Arabic you say ta. That means come here. 
What's interesting also, I mean, we have extreme a lot of challenges with this with game, but the uh, interesting thing is that uh, in, uh, most of the stuff that you see in the animation, mocap, is actually done by me. And I'm saying big brother, little brother, father, and every pretty much every creature in the game, even the girls, is done by me because again we didn't have the money to you know to, uh, we didn't couldn't afford any actors so i had to jump in a you know black suit with different dots on it and just do it so you hold in triggers and you start to walk you actually can interact with this one if you see like how brother smells it like this and and when little brother interact he's kind of like and remember this interaction because i will come to this at the end and talk about something else the graphics I'm really happy with brothers. I can tell you like one thing in brothers, we have like unique stuff all the time. Like for instance, this wagon, we had so much bug with this one, it's crazy. I mean, for me, doing the first game, people who like, is not developers, all the developers know this, but it's crazy how much, how games are in the beginning. I was so frustrated. I was like, what? It's not, it's not, it's not going well and it's like really buggy because, but that's because I was very unexperienced at that time. So the idea was to, to like tell the story between, uh, uh, with animations, how they react, how they handle, how they talk and how, how they are. And with, with, with less, uh, with as, as little like, uh, let's see now, he doesn't want to grab. Come on, big brother. Yep, there he goes with as little like uh, dialogue and stuff as possible. So we try to make as a, a clean experience as possible. Uh, here we're gonna put him up there. You can see me, it's actually my sound coughing of the father. Look here, listen here. <coughs> Almost sounds like him actually. This is actually the only thing we have is repetition in Brothers. And that's also a point for that, which I'm gonna come to. Obviously people who will listen to my commentary is people who have like played through the game. I hope, please don't look at this if you haven't played through it because I will destroy the whole experience for you. I mean, not destroy it, it will probably be interesting in many ways, but I will spoil everything for you. This is such a passion project that really was a pain in the ass to get through because like the problem with this game was like in many ways it was quite different It's a game that haven't been tried before I was new in the business people knew me for making movies so it was really hard to to you know tell the companies that are, you know that would really could pull this off so it was like really tough but I'm really happy and all the pre reviews we got all the reactions we got before the game was like very bad but I didn't care I really believed in this one and I'm so happy that the success of brothers which is Kind of crazy for me doing the first game. It's really awesome. So again here, like telling the story without any dialogue. And w once uh, we started to do that, we realized that actually, you know, there m many of the people have reacted a lot uh, for the story of brothers. And really, it's extremely simple story. It's about two brothers, and they're gonna save their father. And people has been really hit by the story, and they don't actually understand anything of this what they're saying. But at the same time, you can sense a feeling of what's going on. And the idea is, again, to the interact and, and learn to get to learn the brother. Like, for instance, here, if I go with Big Brother, now many people have missed this, you will get a reaction. And, and Little Brother does something else. So there were, like, unique animations of every brother for everything you interact with. We also were thinking of, like, uh, you know, because I've seen some playthrough when people play on YouTube and stuff, and you can see that some, a lot of people miss a lot of uh, stuff to interact to and uh, we tried with different ideas to put some kind of like a point or some kind of light or HUD or whatever to tell the player like here you can interact but that couldn't work. And this of course if, if you look closely in the beginning you have the mother scene where their, their mother has drowned when he's young and that's part of the reason why he's uh, scared of swimming so his big brother is like I can help you. And it's really quite like you understand from the body language like what's going on and what's not going on. Here's actually the dog. I'm gonna show this dog is called Sieve. It's actually my ex dog. <laughs> She's really cool. There she is. We just took a picture of her and we made like a model of that dog. Really nice dog. Actually, I didn't like dogs before these dogs. Now I love all dogs. One thing also with brother that was really hard to work is the camera. Now you see here the camera, if I, if I go up like this, maybe it's a bad place to show. 
you see that the camera will like try to place the right brother on the right side. Uh, you see it, if I go like this, again, the camera will try to place big brother left side, little brother right side to give you the right stick on the right brother. Before, in the beginning of the production, we tried to do it uh, that it puts the right brother on the right side, even if they were close like this. But the camera spins so much, it was like experience like this almost, and people got very dizzy. Here's actually, I like actually this guy in the background. He seems angry. Look here, when he's gonna knock on the door. Who knows what goes on there? Oh, he's not knocking. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> I just think he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I like that guy, he's cool. I'm really happy with the visuals, really, really happy. The team has done a great job. I mean, we had some really great artists, especially our art director, Klaus Engdahl, and of course, level designer, Philip Kolianos, and Pontus, who was another great senior artist. I mean, they're really great people, you know. Here we come to this guard, and if you go with the little brother, he will like splash the, this on him. <laughs> And actually, you can't proceed, so you have to interact with the... If you go with him again, he will just, you know, make fun of him, so you have to go with, with Big Brother, too. And again, if someone understands Arabic, it's, fu it's funny what's it. When Hadi, that means, like, where is that? But it's not, like, taken directly from the Arabic language, just inspired. And the reason for that is also, like, to make up your own language, to make it sound good. It's very hard, so I took the Arabic language, just changed it, which I think made people, you know, accept it. But because just making up whatever language, I think could sound really weird. So now we are in chapter one in the game. When Hadi? When Hadi? Where is that? On Ada. Ah, cool. And uh, the little brother is, of course, much more <laughs> playful. And here you have something else you can interact with, also like, yep. And, but the little brother, he can like... Yeah, there we forgot a sound, actually. That's funny. We don't have any sound there. Never saw that before. Interesting. All right. Now we know that. Too late to fix, but anyway. There's a... Here's one. When you push the big brother button, he will actually point where to go because we don't have any map, as you see. Go in the huddles as possible. Now, this girl playing basketball for some reason, it's actually a trophy. When you go up here and throw it down the well, you get a trophy. And the idea with the trophies was to make them like different stories, not to have like things you collect and different stuff. It was more fun for us to make them like short, short, funny stories. Uh, here's another one. Look here, for instance, if you interact with Big Brother, it's actually an outdoor toilet. You can see that he's like, it smells really bad. And you go with the little brother, of course, he's... <laughs> this actually sounds like the same... It is the same guy that was in the earlier part, like, knocking on the door. Maybe he went to the bathroom now. Let's get up here to the drunken guy. This was actually a scene, uh, which I think that was some of uh, some like tried to take it away because it's a kid and he's drink alcohol but we didn't take it away so that's because he's not really drinking he's just spitting it out but I remember like someone said but I didn't really care really you know I was like it's cool it's funny okay let me show you an example how we spawn the plane now if I put the brothers on the wrong side let's look now I put the little brother on this side and the big brother there so the camera walks over you see the dog and when the camera comes back we place them on the right side for you. So this is part of the design that to make like... Uh, here here was like really one tough decision because here many people didn't understand that they can actually push to whistle to the dog and to get here and when you come here you can like push with big brother, a uh, little brother and he does that. So many people finish this without doing that actually. But we really didn't want any hard here. This could be really tricky if you change the camera like this. So again, like with brothers, everything has had to be unique. Like with this dog, I mean, we really wanted to use him here only. And that's pretty much what brothers is about, trying to get unique stuff all the time. Because for me, I really don't like repetitiveness in many games. I mean, we had some repetitive stuff in brothers, but actually if we had more time, we would even not re repeat anything. 
The only thing that was repeating is because of the design, and that's actually when they help each other up and swimming, and uh, that big brother is stronger with some with with some levers. And the auto jumping, of course, was was, was, a, was a direct inspiration from you know most of the auto jump games. But uh, from what I understand, the first one was Ocarina of Time of Zelda. The reason for that is we only have one button also, so it's kind of automatic. You, you can't really fail; it will jump for you instantly. Actually, there's one funny thing here. I remember one time, and I came to the job, and, and a couple of the team, they were laughing. And I was like, what are you laughing for? And what they did was that they had one guy in the beginning of this stage that started to walk. And if you waited here, like, for 15 minutes, I'm going to show you now. I'm not sure if you can see the house from here. If you waited for 15 minutes, you can see the house in the background. He goes into that house and you hear screaming. And suddenly the whole house starts to burn and people run out of there. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I, I, I knew that there was something going on. But I was like, come on, we have to take that away. But because what happened? Because this is an emotion experience. What happened if you, if you see that and you, you know, happen to wait there for 15 minutes? But that was actually in the game a long time. But there's another thing in the game that actually they didn't tell me about, which I'm going to show you right now, which is quite funny, actually. Which I'm kind of happy that uh, it's still in the game. Here's actually a fun trophy that I'm going to show you. Now you have uh, this bird here. Again, our trophies are like small stories. So this bird, little brother releases him. Now remember this because we're going to pick him up uh, later. But let me show you this funny. I, I don't think anyone have have seen this. If you pick up one sheep and you start to go around and around like this, you have to keep going around. Wait, wait, I'm gonna try. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It will soon puke, actually. Ah, come on, man. Okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't wanna work, I'm afraid. But it's supposed to work anyway. And he pukes this green puke for some reason. Let's go here. Here another trophy which is quite funny. You see the rabbit? You take the white one with little brother of course because he, and you can put him here. He turns black. Boom. Now you have another trophy. So the, he's friends with them now. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing which is very funny. Actually the little brother's voice is a girl. Nobody knows about this and never talked about this before. The voice of a big brother is a, is a guy, and the little brother is a girl. Now, if you listen closely, you will hear it's a girl, actually. Hey, Maru. It's actually hard, even if you know, but if you hear, listen closely, you'll hear that little brother is a girl. And uh, the reason for that is that I tried boys for both, but, uh, you know, boys at that age, they sign, sound kind of similar in their tone. So that's why... I use the girl to, to di differenti differentiate uh, the, their, their accent. A lot of interactive stuff here, of course, if, if you want to try, like you can do this stuff. Yeah, you can go to the door here. Try to open up this door. Yep. Can't open it, too heavy. Uh, this again, like, you know, uh, we only use it in this chapter that he's throwing you away. I mean, this took a lot of time to make happen. Imagine all the unique animation, all the stuff that needed to be done here. It was like really crazy. I think that's one of the things that makes Brother such a cool experience that you, you know, you, t you, you get to do different things all the time. Like a fairy tale, you know, you want to read new stuff and a new page and everything. Here's another bench we put here. Uh, to give you like a perspective, actually uh, what you see over there is what you're going to come to later, which I will show you actually when we, when we get there. Uh, it's actually at the end of the next chapter. Yeah, so now we are in chapter two. This is actually the most gamey chapter, I would say. Before the game was finished, this chapter was the chapter that people were like, ah, oh, now I understand what kind of game this is. Because, you know, many people saw this game as a puzzle game, which is kind of is. But for me, it's more about the journey and the experience. But I remember that some was like, oh, shouldn't we do more stuff like this? And I was like, yeah, it's okay to have it in this stage like this, but not the rest of the game. And you will see what I mean by this stage being more like gamey. Now, about the story here, actually, 
you know the reason why like because the the troll you've been you've been encountered before uh, his his wife has been kidnapped by another troll so he and he's actually afraid to go to uh, get her himself so that's why he need the brother's help but actually this is stuff I don't like to talk about because it's better to for players that's the idea for players to try to through looking in the environments to understand what is going on and what is not going on in the, in the world uh, of brothers and it's funny also with brothers like before this uh, brothers uh, happened there was two demos before one demo actually the, the, i can tell you the story i had a friend of mine who works in a school where they make like video games and i've always talked about video games how much i love them and he told me like you know i have some students you want to do like a demo or something during the summer i was like yeah that would be awesome that's pretty much when i came up with the idea for brothers and we did a first demo, I wish I could show it to you. And that's the first thing I had, like, you know, having gameplay with this, like carrying some stuff, because uh, the inspiration for Brothers, for me, uh, except is uh, fairy tales. if you look at games, because I'm a huge gamer, but the reason why it's top-down is because I'm a big fan of, like, all Super Nintendo, uh, you know, top-down RPG games, such as, you know, Zelda Link to the Past, Secrets of Mana, uh, Lufia, Final Fantasy 3 and all those games. I really love those games. So that's probably, uh, that is the reason why it's a top down actually. And the name Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, the idea was that it would only be brothers. And I really don't like A Tale of Two Sons. But we had to because of like legal stuff. And it was so irritating when we had decided it's going to be called brothers. But then we had to put something, you know, extra because of the legal stuff which kind of like pissed me off a little bit because I, re I really don't like the undertitle A Tale of Two Sons. It doesn't really fit well. Brothers is cool. So when people, so please call this game Brothers anyway, even if it's legally not correct. When you have a game with no maps or HUDs or how to, it was quite hard to figure out like how do we tell the player what to do? Here's an example of that. Like we, you know, we use the camera to show you that you know, uh, that she's locked in a cage and she cannot get out, of course. And then, you know, they will go forward and like, you know, react to that. And she will actually touch that lock and point. And, and the camera continues to the key. And it's, uh, yeah, kind of the way of combining like, you know, a way a HUD or tell the player this is what you're supposed to do without using any HUD or anything. And this boss was actually very different before. He had a chain around his neck and we actually had it playable but it was too buggy so we had to change the whole game. So the idea with this boss before was that he had a chain around his neck and you could actually grab him with one brother and drag Minish and the other brother jumped up on his back and you could actually you know strangle him and it worked like really good but we couldn't make it none it was like too broken so we actually had to change the boss like this was like a like couple of months before the actual release of the game because we didn't make it work so we made it into this which is kind of simple but kind of works but the other boss fight was much more interesting but uh, I guess like we were over ambitious on that one but he was also much harder before too hard for this game because again brothers so much about the journey and the experience and not about so much about the, the you know how hard the game is and again it's it's a fairy tale so now uh, we leave to chapter three very soon and here the games has a much darker tone, of course. I, I really that. like those guys hanging in the sky. What goes on here? The, 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 all about creating a, a mysterious and, and, and dark world. And, and there is also, I mean, the, the, this game is for me like about the little brother, how he grows up from being, being a little boy, almost not into a man, but really growing up to, to like to, from a child to a, to a grown up boy. And uh, it's, it's really fun to see like how people, when they come here, it's kind of like, oh, what's going on with this game? Uh, I really <clears throat> like to change the atmosphere and everything and going much darker with the game.
this was again this area had like puzzles before where you could actually like burn stuff to like to open up the way but became too complicated anyway so it became more of a mood scene where you just have to wave away some wolves you know uh which just turned out to be ha good anyway but i mean that's common in when you make games you have many ideas but you have to throw away pretty much half of them here we have another trophy when you look at this you see a star in the background a falling star where are you come on there it goes you got another trophy there it's actually quite amazing how much you understand without understanding the language. It's really cool actually with this game. It, everything is so crystal clear. This is where, uh, now you see that Big Brother is locked onto the router. He was free to run around before, but people didn't understand that they had to grab the route over there. And the reason is because we didn't have any HUD or anything. So we had to like pretty much you can you can control little brother here, but not big brother, because the only thing you can know is like when you push your button, he holds on. That one you understand that you can hold here, and you see these like uh, root creatures. At the beginning of the game, we had the wolves following them here and trying to grab them from these uh, cliffs, but that was like so hard to get it to work from like to animate and how they would work. So we just created these creatures which actually worked much better, I think, because they look kind of scary and it's a fantasy, crazy world, so they fit it very well. Uh, they have a little kind of an alien look, I think, which, has, <laughs> which I like a lot, actually. So this is actually Little Brothers, uh, a dream sequence. I love this scene. I think it's so like, you know, to, to, to play a weird dream, it's like, it, it's, it's so nice, I really like it. And here actually it's, it's one of the few times you lose control of Big Brother. You, on, you only have the control of Little Brother. You are my heart, she says to him. If you want, Actually, I could pretty much translate the whole game to you. Because I know exactly what they say. There is like... Uh, when we did the sounds, I had like a, a script there. So what I did say to the actors is like, this is what you're saying. And this is how to say it. Everything they're saying has a meaning, actually, and has a point and have a something they say. There's the father there. My, Uma. Yeah, and again, getting back to the game, no. getting a darker tone. This is like definitely one of those parts. Actually, kills his own brother kind of a scary dream and after this we enter chapter four here we have another trophy which i like a lot uh, which was actually so close of not getting in the game because people like killing themselves and stuff was not allowed and there were like some issues with the teen rating and stuff like that but i was like we can never take this away because it's one of the coolest thing i think so here you come here and you could there actually too you could either save him or like but if you jump up with little brother here, if you do the opposite, you won't be able because he can't carry him. But if you do this, you hold with uh, big brother and you can do that. You actually save him. Uh, so if you didn't do that, he will actually die. But, uh, but it's actually quite a story here. You can see here that here's actually his house is burned down and you can see that it's a kind of like a, a mother and a child that is dead. So his family is dead, that's why I want to kill himself. Uh, but you can also leave him here, or you can come down here, try to like give him hope for life again. That's what I like about the trophies and brothers. It's like making short stories out of them. Uh, that is in the same kind of like story that is in uh, uh, the, the emotions that is in the, in the game. If you see what's there, it's kind of a instrument uh, that that they they have in their family, which will like help him to remind him of good times, and he becomes a little happier. So if we put it here with him, he starts, you know, and it makes him happy. 
it's kind of a small little story that you know so he gets like the power to or the the, the courage to actually bury his, his his family to help him go forward in his life so he actually you know helped him out and now he he's done it a funny little story which i like now it's it's interesting like when people play this game like you would love the players to play like this because the, you get the best view. Like if you play here, you get the view of the background. But players could also do this. And then you will get this view. So part of the challenge was trying to make the views quite interesting. But in this case, of course, the other view is much better. But that's like so. In, 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 in some cases, people get different views and experience. But we we didn't really, we couldn't really like choose a view for the player because again to place the right brother on the right side was very important for us here it's funny actually let me show you something uh we have a trophy up here but actually on this table here you have concepts that i drew of the game which is like really bad drawn but <laughs> if you look closely on the table now you see on the table and you can see uh the one in the middle there it's actually <laughs> i don't know if it's clear but it's actually the mother scene that we played before i'm gonna zoom in and out a little bit it's the mother scene laying down in a really bad way you see the big head the big face and the other one on the right is a picture of a spider uh uh on the spider uh boss later that you will see and then there is let's see what that, that one uh, yeah and that one on the left is actually the river when you fly through a river so you can see the water coming down and everything they're really stupid looking but it's fun we put them in just for fun actually again here if you look closely you can try to find that bird that you released and here he is and you actually so it's kind of a like a love story because you release the bird and then you know, they get the chance to meet and fall in love. This is also a funny side trophy story, which I really like. And then if we had the time, we'd love to do all the trophies like this, like the hangman. But of course, all of that takes a lot of time. But for me, this is what trophies is about. To have a trophy that makes a difference in the world, that, that means something for the player. <laughs> this actually was before a plane you flew with uh, but after a while we realized that we could actually use the 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 you know the mechanic of brothers to make it much more interesting and once we did that if we felt so great this is so much better than just flying a plane pretty much here's one of the places where the checkpoint can be really bad because you could play for a while and then you can lose on the checkpoint you have to restart over other than that it's Many of the places in Brothers <coughs> are like very nice when it comes to checkpoints. It's interesting, we will come to a bird soon, which in the beginning he wasn't this nice. It was actually a really cool idea, uh, which I, because it was supposed to like, it was a boss that they were supposed to steal his egg. And stealing the egg, they were supposed to like throw it between each other and like, uh, and, and you take out this boss by actually killing him uh, uh, he's, he's hunting you down and you steal his like egg and the actual challenge is to you know uh, keep this egg between you and, and get away from the bird and then the actual bird would die from sorrow so it will actually be uh, killed because he misses his egg and his child but that proved to be like very hard to do it was really hard to do so we had to take it away so we made the bird into a different kind of characters who helped the brothers out to reach their, their goal really so we made him into that he was in captive and and he saves them like that away but that was actually quite early we took that decision because we realized quite fast that oh this will be way too hard one have to remember that the team that made brothers, there are, a lot of them was quite new. I mean, we have some senior people, but most of the guys that did brothers, like we had a lot of interns, we had like a lot of guys doing their first game. So this wasn't like the, you know, the the 
the, the, the senior people or brothers. We had a couple, but many of the guys were new. So, but now these guys are, of course, very skilled. But at that time, like, so for, wow. for many of us, this was our first game, I would say. Yeah, so now you will see that bird that was in the beginning, he was more of a, a, a boss and he would look differently. We have to change the look of him as well because he looked like he had a little bit more evil look. But uh, now he has a more nicer look and now we actually feel for him and supposed to feel sorry for him. And this is actually from a story wise, it's connected mm -hmm. because you see that of course that the brothers are very small and uh, because there are giants living here and there's been a war that you will see in the next chapter. You can also look at these pictures. I think many people miss these kind of interactions. So anyway, instead of like having this bird as a boss, he's, he's now a friendly bird. That's gonna help them to reach the goal. First, we thought of like actually controlling the bird and, uh, you know, let the player control the flying of the bird. But that, came, you know, that was going to be too hard because like, like letting people fly everywhere here would be a lot of work <laughs> to try to build a level where you can actually fly and control. Here's a perfect example where if like the player would play exactly as the developer, developer would want to, that would be really happy. But, but you know, players like do what they want. So that why we realized that it would be way too much work to let the player control the bird. So that's why we took it away. And look closely at that feather later. There is a kind of thing you can, a hidden thing here. You see the feather he dropped us. If you take that feather with you, I have it in my hand here. And you release it here. You see that it's flying away. But it will come back later in the game. I will show you where. So now we are in chapter five, where the game even goes darker in a way. But I'm very happy that people get this uh, puzzle, you know, without explaining anything. That's what I'm really proud about with brothers. But we don't have to over explain everything. The people like, you know, get it after a while. So you have to pretend to be their god to kind of like, you know, because if you don't do that, they will attack you, of course. So you have to be very... I really love those little guys, actually. <laughs> you can just try to scare them away, like... Ugh. They're quite stupid, too. So now you're saving this girl who turns out to be not so nice. And the, actually, the idea with her was even more... I mean, it's happening in the game now. But the idea with this girl is that... Uh, to create a, 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 a tension between the brothers that they kind of question each other a little bit because the big brother will kind of like start to fall in love with her which we will see in the game also later on. So the brothers kind of like, you know, what happened to you? She's like, I don't know. And, and here again, like slowly she will try to like, you know, make the big brother like her and you can see that the little brother don't like her so much even in, in his rec. He's like, in the beginning, he's more like, okay, sure. You will see actually different steps of how, how he reacts to her. Here he's kind of nice. And then you will see later on how he, he becomes. He becomes more and more suspicious. Here actually you can see that uh, these small people, here are, that you saw before, here are actually like they're, some of them too, hidden here and doing a, having some kind of a ritual. You see them here. This is also a trophy, uh, a lot of work behind this and probably not so many players have seen this. But yeah, obviously they have because it is a trophy. Here are the, these whales I really, really like. Yeah, I don't know why I really love this water. It's kind of like beautiful but scary at the same time. Imagine swimming there, that would be awesome. Yeah, look at look at the girl now how she's climbing. Look, almost kind of spiderish, you see? And she's like, you know, she's not like she's not walking like they do. Look at the girl now again how she jumps. Jumping in a way which is not kind of like natural that 
a girl like her should do. Okay, look now. She's like, what? <laughs> yep. Now look how she climbs everywhere. And of course, here you see, if you look closely before, like how she's very happy with the big brother and she, he really likes her. He looks like she's like... He look at little brother, he's kind of like, come on, what are you doing? It's like, come on, come on. And the little brother is really feeling that something is strange. So we have the boss scene here, uh, where you actually have to fight this, the girl. It's kind of creepy, boss actually. You almost feel sorry with, for this spider. You have to grab out all the legs. But you see that this boss, like, every time she comes, you have to like put the uh, leg so it's like pointed to in the middle. Because like, look how if you turn like here, look the leg now. It's the one from inside so you can grab. Because if it's like too close to the corner, they will cut into the. Yeah, it would be very complicated. Let me see here. Boom. You see, she turns around and she points her leg inside, insidewards. Okay, now she's very like, again here, boom, on the inside. And then we have a cutscene that triggers soon. Again, in the inside, and now we do this. And then of course she stabs the brother. This is actually what kills the brother. You see his color in his face and everything changes. And the idea here is, is that the father can actually sense that something is going on, is trying to help them, but obviously he's very sick and cannot do it, so... But he feels there's something going on. The connection between families. Okay, now we're very close to the finding the actual uh, cure for the father and here is like one of the hardest moments in, in in the game actually so now little brother comes to the you know to the cure where, where he can find the cure for his father but he's also like uh, uh you know the big brother is downstairs like down waiting and he's very very bad and uh, this scene was of course very very hard to make i mean uh, uh, just to record it with the sound and everything, the actors is, is really crying for real here because to get the uh, uh, authenticity of, of the scene. But it was important to make because this, this is like one of the most important scene of Brothers, this actual like ground design of Brothers, to controlling like two Brothers with one stick and then you literally like lose your left hand and left stick to feel that there's a loss, a physical loss for the player. Uh, who's controlling the, the brothers. So this is a very hard part, which actually was very tough to record. And uh, for me, it's even more personal, because uh, uh, when I used to live in Lebanon, uh, I moved to Sweden when I was 10 years old. And my mother, you know, I really want a little brother, and my mother has had, like, a lot of miscarriages all the time, like, almost four or five times. And I think on the fourth time, you know, when I... Uh, when she had miscarriage again, uh, she actually asked me to bury the, my little brother myself. So me and my uh, sister went out to bury my little brother. So uh, that was very hard for me. But I mean, this scene is kind of like inspired from my own life, you could say. Uh, so it was very hard, especially to play the scene now when it's done, because it's been a while. It's 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 much harder, but I'm I'm really really proud of 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 like the scene and how it's working. I love these uh, fantasies also in my mo in my movies, especially one called uh, Zozo, which is like inspired from my own life. You have a lot of fantasy going on. I'm like this like he he fantasized that Big Brother is is back to life. Actually, I, I think many players who played here like thought, oh my God, it can't be true that Big Brother will die, but that, that was the point of the whole game. And uh, you will understand also another design 
decision uh, that's coming later, which I think is actually what makes Brothers what it is today, actually, which I'm so proud of. This is, this is like, I remember the first night I came up with, I was in a hotel room when I came up with Brothers, the concept of Brothers. This scene was like one of the first scenes, you know, that came up in my mind, like, you know, that you actually have to bury uh, your own brother. Uh, but of course, it was a, a lot of challenge to, to make it happen and make it, you know, uh, visually clear what to do and how to control and, and obviously understand now why we can't have any HUDs and all these kind of weird stuff in the, on the screen right now. That's also one of the reasons why we want the experience to be as clean as possible, not to get away from the illusion that you're actually, you know, in, in this world. It's, it's, it's so clean that like you don't see anything and it's not so often you have games where it's like super clean in the whole screen. Actually, if you stop and you push the button, it will start and cry, and the controller will shake, you know, but you can release and hold on to the... This scene, of course, was like very important that we didn't have any bugs or crashes and stuff like that, so... Because it's such a... It's like the most important scene of the whole game. So you literally have to drag down your brother, and you can see that we have four uh, piles in the background, and, and we help the player as much as we can here, make them understand that you have to go and push in that pile. So we pretty much take the controller over from the player from right about now. And, you know, so we place the, the, the player behind one of the piles so we don't get any, you know, we, we really don't want to end up, this was very important to keep it flow and keep it flowing. So the players didn't really say like, oh, what am I supposed to do here? So it's. I think we really succeeded because I've seen some people play this and they're really like emotionally, you know, it's emotionally very heavy. So they quite understand. And I love the pacing that it goes so slowly here. I think uh, it, works, it works really well. And now you really feel that you're not using your left hand again. And that's, I'm so proud of. It's so cool that you're really feeling that you're missing one hand really. Now you have the bird coming back. I'm gonna leave it up to interpretations here. I know exactly why he's back and what's going on, but it's more fun for you out there to figure it out. In a way, I think it's quite obvious, but I mean... So now we are in the last bit of the game. It's funny also, I'm talking all the time about the little brother and how playful he is and how he later becomes more and more uh, like serious in the game. And while I'm playing this right now, I, I mean, I've already talked that I've experienced burying my own little brother and stuff. And it's funny, it's like, I'm kind of realizing that this is very much my story and I am the little brother. Because I kind of started kind of playful in the beginning of the game and now I feel like quite emotionally, you know, heavy. I have a like big thing on my chest, if you know what I mean. But anyway, to get back to the design, this is actually the biggest, biggest, biggest design issue. I, I, can't, I could literally not sleep when I came up with this. I even remember that time. Now you remember that little brother could not swim, of course. This is very important. He could not swim. He don't have the courage. And he always like felt that it's his, his fault that his mother drowned. And his mother comes up and she tells him like, come on, you can do it. You can do this. Continue. And here's the thing, because you're only using the right stick to control and you only have the right, the left, right trigger of the little brother. Coming up that you have to push the left trigger is actually the dead brother's button to get the strength to continue on your own. 
was for me like wow because for me it was like grow making character growth in an interactive way and making it like by pushing a button and that's i think was the moment that was the real wow moment i remember when i came up with this i couldn't sleep i was like up all night and i came in the day after the team i was like okay guys you were gonna go nuts and when i tell them that you know they were like wow and and this is for everyone i think this moment is the big moment so when I push right trigger, he just cries, he can't. But when I push left trigger, you see the camera goes down a little bit. Kind to show that something is happening, it gets more strange. You hear the big brother's voice in the background and the controls start to shake. So you literally have to push, push the big brother's button to get the strength. Once you do that, you can swim on your own. Otherwise you can't. So you look like you're literally feeling the strength of, of like big brother inside you and I'm so proud of this moment, it's crazy. So we are like in the ending scene. This was actually supposed just to be a cutscene but we changed it so you actually can make the last walk up to your father. Which I think was very good to like give the player kind of like a... Because there's so much emotions here, hopefully if you have played everything through they will feel it so you you give the player the last part where you control the little, little brother and i will also show you the very important thing like remember like in the beginning of the game when we interacted with that flower and he like kicked it down and and look now how he reacts to the same thing so he's like it's really the story about the little brother how he grows into another person so i'm gonna go up to the same flower actually and see how his reaction is Let's go up to that. Here's the. Here's actually when we started the game. We put the father in the wagon, and here you have that. So you, if I re, if I interact now, he will react more mature and smell it like the big brother did. And once I come here, it's actually exactly where the games started and where the game menu is, and you can see here also that, you know. That is almost like the father who's breaking up and the little brothers who's come out as the stronger character here. So this is the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed me talking about this and I hope you enjoyed the game and I'm, I'm looking forward to create a new game with the whole team of brothers at the new studio called Hazelight. Have a great one everybody. Thank you. Yeah, Joseph and your team at, uh, I guess, at Starbreeze Studios. But your team, man, I got a lot of perspective. I actually appreciate this was worth doing a part six for this exact moment. It's always, I always find it appreciative. I know I dozed off a little bit, and if you guys heard me kind of sleeping... No, it's not because I was bored of what Yosef and his team was... Well, really, Yosef was the only one narrating. It's not because I was bored. It was because, well, yeah, I'm tired. Because I was very busy today, so of course, I was maybe catching up on sleep. But in between, while I was kind of dozing in and out, I was listening. And just hearing about his personal background and how this game is kind of based on his own experiences. And his team... And they just got to do what they want. Yeah, chef's kiss. I won't give this a 10 out of 10. 
But man, I do appreciate of what they were trying to do here. I very much appreciate that. I literally did a video of like how the video game industry needs to kind of do unique experiences like this. And lo and behold, it just feels like Yosef and his team was just really passionate about it. And then he started his own company. I know Yosef gives a lot of flack of basically his bombastic speech at the Game Awards 2017. Absolutely. But give the guy credit, give him credit where it's due. At least he knows what he wants to do, and he... I find that interesting he was a filmmaker, so... He just used his filmmaker kind of like, um, experience. And he was definitely green when he did this game. But he did something that he wanted to do, and I, I kind of very much appreciate it. I respect the guy. So I'm curious of what he'll do next. Because... When you really think about it, he only did three games. Brother Attell, Two Sons. Then five years later, he did A Way Out. Then he did the fantastic that me and my wife play, It Takes Two. So the guy knows what he's doing. Not all of them are bangers, but out of the three, two of them are absolutely fantastic. This game and It Takes Two. So, Yosef and your team, bravo. You guys earn my respect. I find it always... And I'll make this short because then now I'm going to do my verdict video. But yeah, just getting his insight his of why certain sections were the way they are. Some sections I absolutely miss, even in my Xbox 360 version. Yeah, I find that very fascinating of his perspective of why he, why his team did certain gameplay sections the way they did or why they took several narrative specific moments and why they took away some uh, moments that would have made the game it would have had the game out longer in fact yeah the the creative decisions that they made for this game it made sense and it was kind of good to see the kind of like the inside perspective of the developer and his team of what direction they went with yeah the behind the scenes i it was i don't you don't get that a lot in games, and when you get to see the process of behind the scenes of what process they took to do the video game development and everything, like narrative, story, art direction, and so on, I find that always fascinating. Especially if it's a developer is not being a total dick. He, he, he seemed generally passionate about this product, and it shows when he just kind of spent with us like 55 minutes, or 50 plus minutes, but... I generally was engaged, I enjoyed, I think, yeah, his humor was spelling on of what he wanted for the sequence, his introspection, yeah, yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know he was like a Swedish Lebanese film director, I, I, but it, it doesn't matter, the guy is, the guy is great at his craft, and I, I don't know how he is as a film director, it sounds like he does pretty well, but in terms of video game development, the guy knows what he's doing. He knows his vision. He knows what he wants to do. Yeah. I respect him. I respect his team much more. Yeah. Way to go. Okay. So, let's take another short break. And then we'll do the verdict video. So, we'll be back. 